In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This particular gospel story that we hear this morning is very special to me. A few years back, I had the opportunity to stand in the place where Jesus cast the demon out of the man in the synagogue. And then I was able to walk down the street to the house where Simon Peter and Andrew and Jesus all went to that morning. And this was the time before the invention of antibiotics and vaccines aspirin, Tylenol. You see, back in the day of Jesus, a fever was no small matter. Fevers and sickness often resulted in death or severe disability. And while fevers signal infection and are a sign that our bodies, immune systems, are very hard at work, whatever the cause, Anyone who has had a fever or held a child with a fever knows how crummy they make you feel. No one would wish that on anyone, not even on a mother-in-law. You know, after leaving the synagogue that morning, where Simon and Andrew and all that were present witness Jesus cast a demon out of a possessed man, Simon, who we know as Peter, and his brother Andrew, they tell Jesus about Simon's mother-in-law as soon as they enter the house. Obviously worried about her, they ask for his help immediately on her behalf. And what I find interesting in this story is that Jesus doesn't ask questions who have you been in contact with? Where do you think she picked up this thing that's given her a fever? And he doesn't try to make a diagnosis. And just as he did in the synagogue, he acts. Jesus goes to her, takes her hand, and lifts her up. And in that moment, miraculous healing takes place and reveals and shares with her in a very real and physical way what is available when the kingdom of God comes near. And in grateful response, what does she do? She acts, doing what she does best, offering hospitality and care to her family and guests. Now, in my circles, there's always been quite a bit of talk about, yeah, it figures. You know, a woman goes and serves. But think about it. That was a role of honor in the family, to be able to love and care and serve. And so Jesus gave that honor back to her and restored her to her former self. But he also gave her something that is available to each and every one of us as well. You know, throughout his life and ministry, Jesus was singularly focused on his mission. He didn't spend years developing a strategic plan, making sure he had enough resources or pledges or the right allies and political connections. Instead, he stuck to the essentials. His mission, our mission, of proclaiming the good news of God's coming kingdom that is near even now, healing the sick, and resisting forces of evil by casting out demons and offering freedom freedom, 
freedom from those forces that bind and keep us from being our authentic selves. And then Jesus took the time to pray, to withdraw and tend to his own spiritual life, not just as another item on his to-do list to check right off, but rather to rest and to renew and to breathe and connect to God in order to sustain God's mission. His connection to God allowed him to stay focused even when he didn't cure everyone brought to him for healing. And that's something that I hadn't noticed in previous readings of this passage. In the gospel, it tells us that all of the sick and possessed people from the city came to see Jesus, to be cured, to be healed. But he didn't cure them all. It says he cured many. And I think this is instructive. Because how often do we focus on who we've missed? Those who have left those who aren't happy, what we're not doing, where we're falling short, when it might be more helpful to focus and draw strength from who we have reached, from what we have accomplished, and where we have moved more fully into God's calling to proclaim, to heal, to resist and unbind in the unique ways that God has gifted St. John's and has gifted each one of us, just like he gifted Simon Peter's mother-in-law with that gift of hospitality. You know, friends, during this last year, we have brought the gospel through our live stream worship to more folks than we ever could have imagined. On Christmas Eve alone, we had over 10,000 views of our Christmas Eve services, 10,000. And we've stayed connected and deepened our relationships to one another and to Christ through our small groups, through our Bible studies, through pastoral visits and phone calls, delivery of flowers and meals, parish communications children, youth, and adult formation opportunities. And we have proclaimed the good news of Jesus Christ in word and deed by feeding the hungry in our community, working towards justice and healing with kindness and compassion, by educating ourselves on the issues of food and security in our community and the sin of racism and working towards racial reconciliation and justice for all God's children. We have been a light to our community. And I am grateful that so many of you say yes to Jesus and to St. John's every single day. And for those that are unable to say yes, or have chosen a different path at this time, it is my hope and prayer that Jesus' reconciling love will heal and lift you up in God's time, that you may once again participate in God's mission here at St. John's. You know, friends, this portion of Scripture has often been used as a bad mother-in-law joke. You may have heard it. Jesus heals Simon's mother-in-law. Simon Peter betrays Jesus. But Jesus, in freeing her from her illness, did something new in the life of Simon Peter as well. The healing of this unnamed woman, all we know is that she's his mother-in-law, allowed Peter the freedom to follow Jesus to go, to act and participate in Jesus' mission, secure in the knowledge that she would be there, whole, restored, and renewed to help and support his wife and children 
while he was gone from home. And as we ponder this portion of scripture, I wonder too how Jesus will lift us up when this pandemic-induced fever breaks. How is he lifting us up right now to receive God's unique call for St. John's, to focus on Jesus' mission of proclaiming and healing and resisting evil and offering freedom to sin-sick souls. In the Orthodox tradition, the word and work of Jesus is considered spiritual medicine. And in fact, healing of the soul ranks higher in that tradition than healing of the body. And in fact, the healing of the body is offered as a sign of God's blessing and blessing to the person's experience in God's healing and to inspire others to do God's will. And so healing is to be sought both through prayer and the application of the physical sciences, but no complete healing is possible apart from the final resurrection of a person because death still reigns on this side of eternity. And like our gospel today, not all people are healed despite fervent pleas to God in the application of the best medicines. But that doesn't mean that they don't have faith it doesn't mean that God doesn't love them. Because of sin, there is sickness in this world. And we know that sometimes sickness and illness need to be endured. And in the weeks and months ahead, as we continue to endure and heal from this time of sickness in our nation and throughout the world, I encourage you to spend time in prayer as Jesus did, to rest, to reconnect, to breathe in the love of God, to heal and refocus, that we too may experience the freedom and restoration that Jesus offered to Simon Peter's mother-in-law, to Peter, and to all of us. And with Jesus by our side, we too can inspire and partner in healing this broken and yet wonderful world.